Hello, so I finally got the uh, PCBs I've designed for my little analog discovery uh, impedance analyzer project uh, back from the manufacturer. So, uh, small PCBs here, um, they look quite nice, uh, reasonable accuracy on the holes, uh, etc. So the design of this board uh, is based on a couple of prototypes I've been making. Um, this one was the first prototype. How we can get some focus on this. Um, it's a little bit messy, I salvaged some parts here, but um, this kind of works. But uh, I made a second prototype, uh, the one you see here, uh, slightly improved again salvage some components from it. Um, this one actually worked quite well and this is the design uh, the new board is based on. Um, performance should be about the same, perhaps even a little bit better because well this one is a mess you can see you've got uh, piggybacked SMD components here, lots of little wires and stuff. Um, so probably a little bit better noise performance on the new boards. Anyway, let's have a quick look at um, what it does and uh, why I designed it the way I did. So to measure impedance using the analog discovery, this is basically what we need. So first here we have wave output. So this is from the function generator. So this is where we will have our sine wave output so we can run frequencies from uh, 1 hertz up to 10 megahertz. Well, we can do 20 megahertz, but it starts rolling off quite drastically uh, at 20 megahertz. First, we tap off our reference signal. So this is going to be the reference waveform we're going to be used to compare the result. Um, we need a shunt resistor. So here we have to be mindful of how much current the analog discovery can deliver. So the uh, output op amps um, used here, they can deliver up to, I think about uh, 30 milliamps RMS, but probably shouldn't drive them that hard. Um, then we have our device under test here, and we have our Kelvin connections here to get as accurate as a result as possible and then we have our measurement across the DUT here. So these are the two scope channels so we have channel 1 channel 2 and based on this we can convert these two uh, return signals or the two signals we measure here uh, uh, sine waves here so we convert these into the frequency domain and we can calculate the uh, magnitude and the phase and knowing the shunt value uh, we can do all sorts of interesting uh, calculations um, but in practice it's a little bit more advanced than this so to get more range out of the instrument um, since we are limited uh, to plus minus 5 volt and less than that um, when we actually load up the output here. Um, we need more than one shunt to get better flexibility uh, out of the instrument. So to have more than one shunt we need some switching here. So since this is something I wanted to have uh, without using any uh, external supply, uh, we are somewhat limited uh, on the switches here. So one option could be because, well, we do have a plus minus 5 volt coming out here of the analog discovery, but it's limited to 50 milliamps. So that is not a lot to work with. Originally, I actually wanted to have a buffer here on the output so we have more control and we could add a little bit more grunt. Um, we could put some more current through here but 
it's not an option when we only have 50 milliband available. So to switch shunts here, well, what seemed like an easy solution was to use some uh, relays, but the problem is most relay coils would use a lot more than uh, the power we have available. Of course, you could find some uh, expensive reed relays that would work in this, but I really want to keep it both fairly simple and fairly cheap. So highly specialized uh, read relays is not really an option either. So what I came up with was using um, some analog uh, switches. Uh, HC or ACT doesn't really matter here. Uh, 4053. So 74, 4053 is basically three switches, three analog switches uh, in one 16 pin package. So that makes good sense to use here, but we have to think about that there are some limitations. So while these are uh, quite linear, the internal resistance is relatively high um, with the plus minus 5 volt supply voltage the internal resistance is something around 70 to 80 ohm so that is much too high for the lowest shunt range because here we're talking the shunt will be less than 50 ohm uh, in my current design I use 34 ohm uh, as the smallest sun resistor. So what I've done instead is that I'm actually paralleling a couple of these switches to bring down the resistance. So I'm using for the low, if you say this is the low shunt, mid shunt, high shunt, um, using three switches on this one, two switches on this one, one switch on this one. So these are the two ICs we have here. These are purely for switching the shunts. So, well, of course we will because of the internal resistance here and uh, this resistance is not very stable. So if we took our reference out here, it our measurements would include the 74 ACC uh, 4053 um, uh, together with the shunt. So that's not ideal so to eliminate these 4053s um, I added another 4053 so it will look like this so if we go over here so actually we will have another set of switches here Let's see if I can fit this in here like this so these go together here and then you'll have our reference here channel one and so another thing worth noticing uh, is that these are actually differential inputs the scope inputs so um, that means we get full pretty much full um, Kelvin, or we get full benefit of a Kelvin because um, we have both plus and minus inputs here. So um, by adding these switches here, we are completely eliminating the effect of using the 74, 40, 53. Well, not completely, we're still going to have a little bit of drop here, um, signal drop due to the internal resistance, but that is minimized by running a few in parallel. So. Basically, this is what the shunt uh, switching circuit looks like. Um, another thing is the input ranges on our scope here. So we only have two ranges, I believe it's, well, the lower range is definitely five volts. And I believe the higher range is 20 volts. So we will never need the high range um, in this project here uh, because 
we have maximum. Well, it's it's plus minus, right? Um, five volts input here, uh, plus minus twenty volts. Uh, but anyway, the signal generator wave output here is never going to be more than plus minus five volts because that's the absolute maximum it can output. So that is the only range uh, we need. But the problem is if we want to measure really low impedance and here we're talking something like below one million um, that was my goal for this project to go down because if you're measuring uh, the impedance of a capacitor um, and you have like a film capacitor or something like that it's not uncommon that you will go down in the low million range so uh, with the current we have available uh, to use here so the maximum current i'm driving out here is 20 milliamp about 20 milliamps uh, it's simply not enough to generate enough voltage across a one million um, a dut here to generate a signal large enough that we can measure it so that means we need some amplification so what I've done is I've had it let's just draw it like this um, amplification here so um, originally one bit here on the 5 volt range is about so one bit is about 340 uh, milli microvolt sorry microvolt so 340 microvolt so experimenting a bit with 20 milliamp maximum uh, output current uh, that would only allow us to go down to about somewhere between 10 and 50, 10 and 20 uh, milliohms so let's say 15 milliohm here um, but with amplification so I've added 16 times amplification so that means we can run with lower voltage because well um, if we were to measure something in circuit we want to measure it with um, a signal level that's below where diodes might uh, start switching on etc so um, to get maximum output here uh, about 300 millivolt across uh, DUT will give us maximum output here with 16 times amplification so but when you need to amplify a signal up to 20 megahertz 16 times uh, you need quite a high bandwidth uh, op amp so the op amps I've used here is called AD8039 so that's a dual well single version is AD8038 but uh, this is a dual op amp so it's a 300 megahertz bandwidth op amp about 350 I think actually a little bit more uh, the sum sounds like a lot but as soon as we start adding uh, amplification the bandwidth of the op amp just goes down really drastically really really quickly so actually to achieve near 20 megahertz or uh, flat to near 20 megahertz I had to do it in two stages so uh, it's actually amplified uh, two times here in two stages so we can still keep the bandwidth so that's pretty much what we got on here so shunt switching this over here is for uh, selecting the reference and over here we have our two op amps and out here we have our inputs and outputs so I designed it to take um, SMA connections here but to be honest I'm not sure that's worth the effort the idea is that well you might want to have different fixtures so mostly I just use them with 
some Kelvin clips, but you might want to create some kind of uh, SMD fixture, for example, or maybe tweezers or something like that. Um, so the idea was it's, it's easy to change fixtures, but in reality, this board is going to be reasonably cheap. Um, the most expensive parts are the op amps here. Uh, they're still relatively cheap. Um, something like three, four dollars a piece uh, in small quantities. A um, couple of holes here. It's just for the mechanical stability. So put a little bit screws in here so it doesn't uh, twist around uh, break off the socket here so this is my test assembled so one thing that is quite important is to um, keep the leads here fairly short so I do calibration and it will remove most of the inductance and or it will remove it will calibrate out the inductance and the uh, capacitance from cables etc but since we are limited on the signal level etc uh, it's it's also limited in how much it can actually uh, remove by calibration so uh, best results with very short connections here so in most cases that's not a problem because it's not a huge instrument you can just uh, move the thing around if you need to measure something uh, in circuit okay well I think that's it any questions leave a comment um, so I'll update on my website with uh, exact details uh, put some schematics on there etc um, also I'll make the software available um, I would say this project is 95% software and 5% uh, designing this little board here. <laughs> yeah, so hope you're going to have a nice day and thanks for watching. Bye bye.